I know we have some sad things that have been happening since the last time we met. Uh, Camp Hotlam, where I stayed for five months, actually burned. And um, this was, uh, uh, the, I don't know if you noticed this enormous heat wave that I, I guess you're having that now in Europe. But uh, this happened in the northwest of the, the North American continent. And, it, and temperatures reached in Fahrenheit 121 degrees Fahrenheit. And one, one city in British Columbia actually sort of spontaneously combusted and the whole place was destroyed. This is where they had the highest temperature and the, the entire place was destroyed. So this is a very terrifying thing. And Camp Hotlam, where I stayed for five months last year, I don't know, can I share my screen? Is it possible? Yeah, you can. Um, okay, so I'll just show you. Um, this is, can you see this now? Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is, this is me in Hotlam. And it's, 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 it's very interesting because for five months I got to stay there in a tent and it was really wonderful at 68 years old. It was not what I had expected at all. And yet it was the best time I've had for years. And I started to interact with animals and birds and insects and, and feel the temperature and the moisture. And I think this is so, so important. And I also had lots of encounters with Native Americans. And the Native Americans were, because I, I started to tell the Native Americans, like all the birds and the animals are coming to me. And the hummingbirds, I have a hummingbird on my hat now, but the hummingbirds were coming and flying in front of my face and I could look at their colors and I could start to identify individuals. And it was very interesting to have such a thing. And I told one of the elders, indigenous elders, I said, I, all these animals, bears, I had a, an encounter with a mountain lion, um, eagles, hawks, a hawk landed just, just a few meters away from me on a, on a limb and just looked at me. Giant deer would come up. And I started thinking, what's going on with this? And I asked the Native American elder, I said, it seems like all these animals are coming to me. What's going on? And I, I said, it feels like they're trying to talk to me. And he said, well, what did they tell you? And I thought, well, you know, I'm, I'm not really, you know, I have to think about that. What did they tell me? But uh, I, I think what, what I came away with was that there was no, there was no, um, I had no fear of even the, the rattlesnakes or the bears or the, or the, um, the mountain lion. And it was just wonderful to have this, this thing and to realize and this camp burned just a few weeks ago at the end of June. And so really think about this. This camp is a wilderness camp. This camp is there to teach fire ecology and it burned. And <clears throat> this is of course a tragedy and, and but think about this, if we could take camps like this and turn them into botanical sanctuaries where the most endangered plants are, are brought there and propagated and cared for. This is the most valuable thing that we could do to ensure the future. So I just want to tell you that this is not the only place which suffered seriously. There was a, a cyclone in India which hit the camp in, in uh, Bihar too. So we really have to realize that the intensity and the frequency of catastrophes is increasing. So be prepared for 
for this and realize that we, we have to do more. We have to make very careful infrastructure decisions so that there's zero toxicity, all natural materials. Because if you have fire that goes through these places and there's any kind of toxic substances, then it will pollute the water and the soil. But if we have only natural things, and there's even things that you can do where you build from cob, and when the fire goes through, it just glazes the, the houses. So they turn into porcelain houses after fire instead of being destroyed by fire. So think carefully about what's happening because we're, not, we're no longer talking about the future impacts of climate change. They're here. And so thank you. It's so exciting to hear from Santi and to, to learn about what's going on in Colombia. Thanks for listening to me. It's great to be here. And afterwards, we'll stay as long as anybody wants to talk. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you for sharing this. Um, I will quickly go over to sharing my screen back again. Um, yep. Yes, I, I would like to share some camp news as well. Um, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Um, but first, before we go to the Camp Hotloom, because I wanted to share that news as well, um, we first go to the camp experiences. Um, we have the first camp experience coming up in the Netherlands, which is from the 23rd until the 28th of July, and you're able to apply until Saturday. So if you are close, if you're in the Netherlands or you're in Germany or you're in a position to travel to uh, Camp King's Garden, please do, because it's their first camp and it's very exciting. Um, if you are ever interested in our camp experience, please go to our website and we have a section called events and courses and you can see all these camp experiences there. Um, then we have another camp coming up at Embercombe, which is in the UK near to Devon, and they have a summer rewilding camp from the 17th until the 19th of August. And at Camp Alteplano in Spain, our um, last fireside chat guest will have a regenerative culture course. And here you will learn everything about um, how to work in a regenerative way together and how can we learn from nature while working together. So that's very interesting um, course to take. And that is from the 10th until the 17th of September. And then we have the Camp Green Pop. It we had a shout out about this uh, festival earlier, but unfortunately it got canceled and now they are planning to have it on the 19th until the 26th of September. And Camp Habiba in Egypt has an ongoing opportunity to go to their camp. So if you're interested, please do and have a look. Thanks. And then, yes, to the uh, other camp news, as John already told, and obviously for him, this is such heartbreaking because he has been there for five months. Um, but Camp Hadlin lost 95% of their trees and um, their infrastructure and all the tools. So um, it's a very devastating um, situation. And therefore, we decided to uh, set up a fundraiser um so if you are in the opportunity to give just a small amount to help them to um yeah get take the first steps to uh rebuild themselves then please donate a small amount i think my colleague Kaf will uh, put the link to the do fundraiser uh, in the chat so um we can all uh, help camp hotloom and then some more amazing news is that we reached an amazing mark of planting 1,225,000 trees. I'm stumbling over this number um, at ecosystem restoration camps. And I think it is amazing. And I'm so proud of all the camp managers and all the camp uh, campers who helped um, made this happen. I think this for such a, still maybe a small organization i think this is a really big mark so um thank you as well for reaching that um then camp mombasa mangroves in kenya they received a beautiful donation from a local bank um called equity bank and they 
planted 100,000 trees together. So the employees of the bank also learn more about the mangroves and how important they are. So that's great news. And then Campesinado Valle in Brazil has secured a grant from the regional government in Rio de Janeiro uh, to restore another 30 hectares of Atlantic rainforest. So these are the I don't know, these are the things that really make the impact. So we are really grateful for, for this news. And um, yeah, I would like to continue with the main guest of tonight, Jaguar Shambra. And um, I am very excited about this chat because I feel that we can learn so much from the ancient wisdom and that they want to preserve the nature and the ancient wisdom where we can all learn from. Uh, that makes it very excited, but I also want to do a little shout out because um, as part of their com yeah, commitment to uh, sustain food systems uh, together with the indigenous community, they uh, created a coffee brand, which is a, I have to say it right, a single origin coffee. And it is available for us to order as well. And I think it is a beautiful way of um, drinking your cup of coffee, knowing how it is um, produced. And if you're drinking a cup of coffee, you're also drinking a small part of the camp. So um, I just want to give this uh, a little shout out. And now let's watch this um, beautiful introduction video. <laughs> Navish come by Jayu Kura, Mbakanga Mamba and Tenukura, Amanete and Kajinga, Jingaga, Mbawa Panuka, Dumuktoa, Dumuktoa, Amukura, Makuma, Awaiko, Muka, Mbakanduna, Jibunduna Maya, Janegashka, Mba at Jibunduna, the Kanshina Jangwa. Zenjiguana, Zenjiguana Guashesha, Mbamezanik, Imena and Nigeko Kimango, Makewan Dunishkana Kanjangaga, Zibunduna Kern, at the Jibukam, the big Tuna Kern, Nibai, Kwajan Kumpur, Makuma Wankur. Well, what a beautiful video. Santi, I would like to give you the word. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm really happy and excited to be here sharing this time um, with all of you. Um, so nice to connect um, over this medium. And thank you very much for Ecosystem Restoration Camps to bring this space that we could share um, the few things that, that we are doing. 
um, is, I think, is um, an incredible joy to um, live in the time that we are living and do the things that we are living, uh, that we are doing uh, with all the potential that we have. Sometimes we feel over overwhelmed for the reality that we are encountering, but something that we um, just uh, could learn about the process when the indigenous communities is that to have resilience and to have more, um, yeah, to have like a, a more sense of hope and love with the things that we are doing because in the end, um, we are here to be preserved. And as humans and nature, we have a special relationship together and that relationship is it's not in balance. This is the problem that we are living. So it's not uh, only about the, um, the ecological process that we are living and the deforestations and the biodiversity loss and all the that stuff is actually a reflection of uh, our relationship with nature. And that's something that, uh, as John mentioned in the beginning, we could notice that when uh, where the indigenous communities live, they have that balance. They have the balance to to live in nature, to learn from nature, and to hear nature, and to speak with nature, and that's something that we have lost, uh, but that we could reconnect and that we could do too. So it's not only them, um, it's us too, and we are in a path to share that wisdom and to share that knowledge to be able to everyone that is uh, outside of, for example, the indigenous reserve could have this potential and could imagine like the life that we deserve um, in this beautiful home that we have, that is Earth, that is our Mother Earth. So um, thank you for, for being here. And yeah, I would love to, to first give you a glimpse, like, yeah, my name is Santi, I'm from Colombia. Um, I'm a filmmaker from profession, but a permaculture practitioner, uh, in the last years, and I've been more involved into the regeneration, into an agricultural, into regenerative agriculture the last years. But uh, my main um, profession is, is a, as a filmmaker. So this project in Colombia started as a documentary that I was um, doing with indigenous communities in a special place that is called the heart of the world. I will, I could, uh, I want to share my screen for you to be able to picture this place a little bit more. I don't know if I can do it already. Yeah. Cool. So let me know if you see it. Yes, we can. Yeah, so this is America. This is the land of the condor and the land, the land of the eagle and the land of the condor. And then we go here to Colombia, the second most biodiverse country on the planet. And we are working here in the Caribbean in a special mountain that is the most biggest coastal mountain by the sea in the world. It's called the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. And it's this place that if you follow my mouse, you will notice that it has a heart shape, a heart shape. It goes from the Caribbean Ocean to the snow peaks all in one. So it's declared that it's one of the most irreplaceable places on earth. Um, there is a lot of endemic species there. A lot of um, yeah, things that we could discover that is, is an unexplored area too is really big. It's like three states of Colombia is as big as Costa Rica. So in the, in the Northern part of Colombia, so it, we could say that it's, it's a whole country. Um, and when the conquists arrive, the conquists arrive over here, the indigenous communities went up into the mountain. So they have been preserved for more than 500 years, thousands of years, living in a really incredible balance with uh, the natural forces. So most of the communities are living this in these upper parts, but since a few years ago, they started to going down. So they are rec recovering land and they are starting to, to going down with the mountain. 
Um, one of the reasons that they started to going down, it was because they realized that we will, uh, we are reaching a point of this balance that it could be a major catalyst for humanity. So they, they refer themselves as the, as the elder brothers and they call the rest of the civilization the younger brothers. So it's a culture that has more than 26,000 years in this mountain. Um, and it uh, are four indigenous tribes that live there. They have uh, only oral preservation and they have really cultural stuff that is really incredible in their relationship that they, that they have with nature. So it's really magical. It's a really magical place. Um, they have, um, in the last 10 years, the first indigenous reserve by the ocean after 500 years. And we are working in several points around the mountain into um, the cultural preservation and to reforestation with uh, traditional cacao and coffee um, agroforestry projects. So. 80% of the Sierra was deforested since the, um, the, um, the European conquest. And then the Colombian conflict arrived. So it was like a um, plurif, como se dice? Like proliferation. I don't know if that's a word. Like, um, yeah, like an abundance of um, wheat plantations and coca plantations that, and illegal loggers that they deforest 80% of the native forest from the Sierra. The communities 30 years ago, they have been recovering the land and doing natural um, regeneration. They don't plant trees. They only make um, something that is really special that I, I, I want to share with you. And it's something that they call payment. Um, we as humans, we need to pay to the earth for the things that she gave it to us. So in the same way that um, we pay the electricity and then we pay uh, the things that we consume in the supermarket. There is a, a traditional way to pay for the air, for the food, for the water, for the things that we receive from nature, from the medicine in a symbiotic way. So it's something that is like a spiritual payment. And this payment is something that is really incredible. I don't know. It, it, has other forms in other indigenous communities, but I only know, for example, these indigenous communities that they do that for the whole of humanity. And it's something that is, it could be days of payment, even years of payment or simple actions. That actions recover the balance of the ecosystem. So when we started the project and then we visit, for example, the degraded areas that the indigenous communities are recovering, it's incredible. Nature is thriving again. The forests are growing um, without any, any, any input or any additional help. In the farmer's side, nothing is growing and the soils are damaged and nothing grows until there is a human intervention. Um, these payments, they do it with, for example, with the special elements that are quartz, that are cottons, that are elements from nature. Uh, we have a little chart film that is 15 minutes that um, a spiritual leader talks more about in deep, so you could find it on our, in our website. But it's something that we could learn into our daily practices, um, to our daily life, and into the regeneration project that we are carrying on. So for example, one of the things that is really special there is that when we arrive to start to a land, we need to do these payments. So there is no way, for example, to create a settlement or to build something without first doing spiritual work. There is no even a process that we could plant a tree without even doing spiritual work and spiritual payments. So it's like a cleanse that we need to do first. And it's a permission that we need to ask to the land, to the spirits of the land, and then um, we are able to start to doing the work. It's incredible. We reforest areas that uh, the soils are really, really damaged because of the heavy use of glyphosate and pesticides and uh, coca monocultures that was in the past. Um, we don't use compost. We don't use um, nothing to, to put into the plants, just the natural payments and the trees grow healthy and, and really good. So um, there is a special relationship, for example, when we do the sowings, we fast. 
Um, after the sowings, we have a special diet. Um, before the sowings, we have a special diet too, because you have a special relationship with the plants. So it's very important that, um, that we could follow all the traditional wisdom of the communities to, to do the project. And, and it's something that has been really incredible and changed life. Um, like, como se dice? Um, like it changed my life in a super positive way because after doing the things like in the way that we are used to it, like sometimes we do that, we want to do the things fast um, and with a lot of worry and with a lot of um, emotions that we carry that emotions into the things that we are doing. So it's really important to have a, a balance first in ourselves to do the things that we want to do in a, in a perfect balance. Just to say, for example, if we go stressed and we go angry and we go with a lot of uh, heavy stuff in our, in our backs to plant in a tree, the tree is gonna pass that in information to the plant. So it, it, it's gonna have it and it's gonna grow with that. So for not to do this, we do spiritual payments before and after um, the sowings. So, I'm gonna. Um, this is the this is the place. I'm gonna sh share here something that you just to see it. This is um, our Machu Picchu. It's actually more older than Machu Picchu, and it's called Tijuna. Um, and this is the first place that we arrive to start to the to the documentary project. Um, the short film that is in our website is from a mamo that is. The mammals are like the spiritual elders from the community. They are not shamans, but they are spiritual leaders um, and they are like medicine mans. For a person to become a shaman, the community already knows that this person is going to be a mammal. So the community take it out in a really uh, early young age, four years or five years. They take it to a special cave. And he's going to live in that cave for nine years without seeing the light, without eating meat, and without eating salt, without a strict diet with plants. This is like a representation and a, a redoing, for example, of the process that we have in the womb of, other, of our mothers, that we go there for nine months. It's the same to go in there into the, the cave He's only allowed to go in out into the night and all the time is carried by the older mammals. So he's, he's, he's not alone. Actually, he is learning, in, go, going into the darkness to learn about things that we could name it as, yeah, like uh, quantum physics, advanced chemics, uh, astronomy, deep astronomy. Um, he learns how to talk with the elements of nature, how to recognize, for example, what the birds are saying, what the water is, is talking, what are the message from, from nature. After this process of nine years, he go outside, he see the light again as a, as a reborn person. And then he start a process to walk in um, 360 sacred sites around the Sierra to doing these payments to recover the balance. So there is places that you do payments for the bad and for the good. They don't have this duality as we have it. For example, the bad is not bad. It's simple an energy that is exists. When it's out of the balance, it, it creates problems. But when it's in balance, it's the perfect complement for us, like the Jin and Jan. So with the project, what we aim to do is like, we, we are a nonprofit that work into preserving all this ancient wisdom through storytelling and films and art and education and different, different cultural projects. But at the same time, we are doing climate positive actions um, with the things that we are doing. So we are working with regenerative agriculture and together the idea is that we could heal ourselves first and then nature um, with regrowing this type of food forest that we have lost in every part of the world, I think, um, is the natural way that we grow our food, but then um, the industrial revolution arrives and then monocultures arrive and then we are used to it to um, eat from sources that are not natural. 
So um, the idea is to recover that part. Santi? Yep. Are, are you seeing something other than a big white box? Oh. Yeah. I only see a big white box. I see a PDF. <laughs> In we, we cannot see the PDF. I think it's a good idea if, um, if you stop sharing and then share again and then click on the PDF if you share. Uh... Okay, let me uh, get back into the call. Yeah. Your, your story was so wonderful. I couldn't interrupt you. Yes, now we yeah, can see. That's it. much better. Thank you. Thank so you. this is the Machu Picchu, <laughs> if you didn't see it uh, before. Um, and yeah, like I told you the story that we are doing. So um, we noticed, for example, in the Sierra, that it's, it's not possible to do these types of reforestations that we are used to it in, in other parts. So um, the communities, in the way that they are recovering the land, when they create a new settlement, they are starting to sow in again. So we noticed that that will be the best way to recover these types of food forests. They have been lost, this food forest too, because of the proximity with us. So they trade some things and they, they, they always have food, but they don't have the abundance that they have before and the food security that they have before. And the areas that the new, these new settlements are are really degraded at, and in some point they need um, our help to thrive again. So um, cacao is a very important plant for them. Actually it's the jaguar tree and it's a really gentle medicine that they say like is the medicine for the heart. Is there is a Mayan prophecy that they say that when the world will be on imbalance, cacao it will it will bring um, um, that balance into the heart of the people with a special connection. So um, all of these medicines, for example, ayahuasca and the coca, that is like a really special medicine too, that is really damaged into the northern part of of the world, is something that we are starting to recover and recover the wisdom of these plants at the same time that we are saving other plants that we are losing for the climate crisis and, and the climate change that we are living. So, for example, there is a special plant, uh, a special tree that we saw that is called Guaymaro. It's in some part is known as the Majan knot. Um, and it's a tree that the mammals, when they are in the cave, is, is the principal element for them when they do the baptisms or they do the weddings or they do long journeys, they only eat that plant and it's a super food as the same as the coca leaves. You eat the coca leaves and you show the coca leaves and you don't need nothing else. Like you could walk and walk and stay super clear in your mind. You could, um, it's a super element that is so misrepresented uh, outside of the indigenous cultures. So this is the mammal. This is um, one of the mammals that he is in the short film. Like this is the snow peaks. And this is the mountain as I, as I, as I showed you before. It's 5,600 5, meters. And it's, it, the mountain, it doesn't it enter into the ocean. So it's, it's not like that and then the ocean, but the mountain is in, encrusted into the ocean. Um, and it's, of course, the ocean has been uh, growing, so a few settlements are already under the water. Um, and this is something really special. For example, they have something that is called the law of origin. This law of origin is the major law of nature and physics and thought. Um, not human law could um, be comparable with the natural law. And as they say, natural law is, is a simple law. It's a humble message to Im imitate the natural and is to maintain a wealth of both spiritual balance as material. So the Sierra Nevada is, is a biosphere and a world heritage site. It's a network of ecosystems that balance the natural ecosystem of the rest of the world. There is it's proven that these visions that they have, that this place is the heart of the world, um, biologically, um, biologically, yeah, uh, I don't know, is that the word? Yeah, it's proof that there is a micro system there in that area that in the Caribbean, that everything that happens there affects the rest of the function of the macro system in the Caribbean and the rest of the world. So 
as the indigenous know, everything is interconnected, but they put really special attention of this place because in this place you could find from the desert to the snow peaks. So it, they say that it's like the representation of everything that has the world in just one place. They have been resguarding this wisdom for thousands of years. Um, and that wisdom is um, invaluable for humanity. Um, we encounter these days that there is a lot of um, projects that work into regeneration and we have been talking a lot of about climate and um, all of these things related um, but we have a lack of um, including the indigenous wisdom um, we are focused most more in in other things and as uh, someone says like the indigenous wisdoms are uh, the indigenous wisdom is really scientific but the difference is that they include the science of the heart so um, it's something that we aim and that we wanted to to achieve is that we have so much things to learn from them that we need to start to giving them the space um, and to hear them because we are not hearing them so they started to going down actually for more than 500 years, like the last 100 years, they have been going down. Actually, there is the first documentary that is in the 1920, in the 20s, that is made from a French guy, and they are already giving the same message. Like, you are losing the balance, um, like, be aware, something is gonna start to happen, the weather is going to change, humanity is going to change, new diseases are going to start to appear. We are losing the balance and we are worried, not for us, but for you. We are not going to disappear, but you are the ones that are in risk for disappear. So they have been teaching us and doing the same and the same and the same. Um, and yeah, of course, like the governments and the entities that have the power to do more action, um, is, is there is no inclusion as you notice for example in this big conference about climate in the cops and everything like um, there is no indigenous representation um, and if it is is a really 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 small minority there is four indigenous tribes living there and we could see here again the the um, the shape heart and there is something that they call, they call the black line. The black line is like a belt that like maintains the balance of this place and to the rest of the planet. And in these sites are the places where they go and do these types of payments. So this is the first part. And with the project, um, the last couple of years, we've been focusing into, um, we talk with the community and we say like, yeah, how is the best way that, for example, a person could make a payment to the earth? And they say like trees, planting trees. Trees is a, is a really important um, way to make a payment to the earth because trees give us everything that we need. So they give us the food, they give us the air, they give us the, go, the water, they give us the medicine, they give us the shelter, and not only for us, but for the rest of the animals and biodiversity on the planet. So they are really important. So we, we um, aim to plant trees just to start to having these types of conversations and to going into deep into this matter with the indigenous communities. And it's a way that the people could connect and it's a way to the people can give to the land and give back to them and yeah, have a relationship directly with them, not only for a moment, but for um, the rest of the years that that tree is going to, is going to work. So um, we started to create in this type of food forest with the community. For four years, we do this work uh, self-finance and yeah, independently. And since the last year we become uh, non-profit right now we have we are based in vienna but we are still um, working directly with the communities actually in august i'm going um, back to colombia to 
film a new documentary with indigenous communities about um, how we could improve our relationship with nature through food, through our food. So the question was like, yeah, how we can be more balanced, more healthy, um, and have a regeneration for both sides, us and nature. And they say it's really easy, it's through the aliment, it's through the food, it's through the way that we grow, trade, and consume our food. And that's something that uh, right now that I'm living in Europe that I feel that is, is increasing the disconnection that we have with um, where our food comes from and how that um, food is growing, like how we are eating it because we don't even say thanks to the food that we are eating every morning. So it's something that is, um, we become like something automatized or automatically we eat, but we don't give thanks for that food. We don't connect with that plant. Um, I could say that 50% um, of the people doesn't know how it, a coffee plant looks like or a cacao plant looks like. And that could be the example with so many other plants. So um, we have a disconnection there that um, is easy to regain. And if we could focus into food in the part of the consume, how we change the production, the trading, and all that stuff, it will be incredible um, uh, benefit for the earth and for ourselves and mostly for the South Global that um, is so un un unbalanced with the North and the trading relationships that we have is the same as we have for thousands of years already, for hundreds of years already. So um, that's things that we could change there. So we started to something that is community regenerative agriculture and to change the way that we trade our food. So this is why Inge told about the coffee. The coffee becomes like an excuse to start to doing all of this. The communities start to sowing coffee because they realize that it's a master plant. Um, it's originally from Africa, but it's something really strange there that cacao that is native from South America ended up being the major crop in Africa and then coffee that is the native from Africa ended up to being the major crop in Latin America. So this is an exchange of cultures and of course the, um, the natives adopt that, the native communities in Colombia adopt that plant. In the Sierra they have been growing coffee for almost 100 years. Um, and they do a lot of spiritual rituals to accept that seed into the territory. They realize that us as younger brothers, we drink a cup of coffee and then we become friends. So um, uh, they say like, okay, we want to do the same. Like we don't speak Spanish, but through the element, we could generate um, a relationship with the younger brother. Um, and as Inge says too, like when we are eating something, we are eating the coats of the, that territory. So we are eating that soil, the water that put the tree, and more um, deep into that, we are eating that plant, that territory, the people that grow that. So it's like an incredible relationship that we have there. So they, they started sowing uh, coffee. Coffee was one of the things that actually stopped deforestation, uh, the same as cacao. And um, with that, we started to having a better relationship here with the North in something that we, for example, with the communities of Ocha agriculture, what we do is that we pre-sale the coffee consumption and the cacao consumption. So the consumer can pre-buy part of the, of the harvest and you share the, the, the finance of the farm. You share the risk of the farm. So um, as climate change is increasing and all the things that we started to talk in the beginning, food is gonna be um, a major problem for us. Like, and more here in Europe, like that 50% of the food, I think it comes from outside. So it's gonna be more expensive. It's gonna be more difficult to find. Um, and the idea is that if we could balance that relationship with the North and the South and the regeneration of the land, we could have incredible positive results so you you can pre-buy that you have pre-buy your part of the harvest and then we deliver your consumption every month or as you want in that way the farmers doesn't depend into the stock market 
and doesn't depend into any external um, yeah, help or support, but they become resilient. And yeah, that we use that for uh, create funds to plant more trees and create more food forests in different communities. So to expand the project, we could have, you could have like, um, um, we just released a reforestation updates from this year and we have a whole part of the website that is dedicated to trustability and transparency. That is something that is really important into the climate movement, movements and to the regenerate, regeneration movements too. Um, and the nonprofit sector, like um, how we are doing the things, like whether is the money allocated and what is happening with, um, with that. So this is the coffee. Right now it has another presentation. Uh, actually right now we are in a crowdfunding for that. And this is part of the current theme that is working. Like um, we are working with more than 60 families there in the Sierra and the idea is to start to expand in uh, more and more and to include more families to regenerate more lands and to create that after we, for example, we finance the farm, we create the food forest, we pay for the tree planting and for the tree carings, we uh, finance the materials. When the crop is ready three years after, we buy that harvest at fair prices, then we trade that harvest and with the profits that we generate, we give it back to the communities, not exactly to the same community, but to different communities to start um, um, scaling up the project. And that's the idea of community supported and regenerative agriculture. Thank you, Santi. Yeah. For this, it's, it's such an interesting topic and I feel that at least I think that we can all learn from this Asian wisdom and I feel that we we are really disconnected um, with this wisdom so it's just so interesting um, to hear. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Are there any any first questions for, for Santi? John? Yeah, I wonder, um, is the coffee available all over the world or is it sold mainly in Europe or how, and how do we order that? Um, yeah, it's available um, all over the world. Like we ship with the Austrian Post that is like CO2 neutral and the things that we are doing, um, of course, cover the, the cost of, of the, the CO2 print. Um, right now it's going to have a compostable packaging too, but we deliver one time in a month. So the people that are subscribed, we send um, a bunk and then we send it um, to every part. Um, of course, the ideal is that it doesn't travel too much, but yeah, like uh, one of the things that for the community is really important is like they said, like not every person can visit the heart of the world, not every person can travel to Colombia, but they could travel in the form of beans to any part of the world. And the people that are drinking that coffee that are connecting with that cacao that is gonna be released the next year with our first harvest um, are connecting directly heart to heart with them. So um, we, we, we ship it to all over the world. You can find it into our website or right now we have like, um, I'm gonna share it again, the screen a little bit. I don't know if you could see it. You see my screen? Yeah. Um, we have um, Indiegogo crowdfunding right now. We have nine, nine days more, um, but you could find there all the information and the video and the community is talking here about um, why they started sowing coffee and what are the things that they doing. This is gonna be the new packaging. And yeah, it's available for all over the world. It's a really special, it's a really special coffee is produced I saw it by the moon, by the star cycles. Um, they use something that is really special is that they use, for example, a special frog that appears to start to harvest the, the yeah, to harvest the harvest. Uh, so when that frog appears, they know that it's time to start to doing the harvest. 
when um, humming, humming um, colibri is the word in Spanish, but this thing that flies really Humming fast. Hummingbirds. Yeah, now. Yeah. Um, when, when he appears, it's another sign. So everything that they do is really nature and having a, a uh, they call it a conversation with the natural world. So they say that we could do that, but we need to train ourselves to start to doing this. So for example, if you were, um, you could do that with the animals that arrived there to Mount Chasta. Um, and it's something that is even intuitive. Like maybe you start to realize in after and maybe you have some times and then you're gonna start to discover something that these animals wanted to try to tell you. Um, and that's really important uh, when we are walking, for example, the Sierra, there are parts that we cannot walk. So we are going up and the Sierra is going up, going down like life. And then there is a certain part that the community says like, we cannot walk over here or we cannot drink water here because there is a special place of element that is not allowed for us to do it. Or I saw a beard and the beard says that we need to going back so that we cannot advance or that we need to stay. And it's incredible because um, sounds so um, out of this world for, for a lot of people, but when you are there with them and they say like, yeah, it's gonna rain and the sky is really nice and the sun is shining and now it's gonna rain in a few hours and then rains and no, it's gonna, it's, gonna have a, it's gonna be a storm and it's gonna be thunders. And they have, for example, the thunders are really messengers. So they say like, we need to hear the thunders because the thunders are, are saying us something. And they gather when there are these types of things. They don't talk too much because they say that we misuse the word so that we talk too much. And actually we talk more with, without words in the way that we express, the, how we move. Um, and they say that words are really used to, to have a sweet word from the heart. So it, they, they, it's really special when they talk, it's really precise. Um, and it's really incredible to, to, live in, to live these things with them because you started to getting used to that. So every time, like for example, they say like, if you're walking by a river, you need to have good thoughts because if not that water is gonna carry that thought and it's gonna bring it to the ocean or to the, to the fount that is gonna go and it's gonna have your energy. So every time that you walk by the, by the water or you are with water, you need to have good thoughts. This is why, I don't know, maybe you experience it in your life, but you have these showers that are really incredible and you feel like alleviated or you go into the shower and then I need a shower, I need to have my space and then I need to align my thought. So there are certain small things that we could do in our lives and that will increase our relationship with nature into a whole other level. And that's something that we only uh, could learn from them. Um, Santi, I, I had this experience in um, Thailand where I went scuba diving, just myself and a Swedish dive master and I and um, it was really bad. The, we were actually looking for a, a plane crash uh, that crashed in the sea. It was a tragedy. And this, the, the water was very, not, there was no visibility. And it was very, very horrible feeling. And I was wearing my wetsuit and I got in, a, I had a Jeep and I drove down the road when we got back onto the land and there was this sign that said waterfall and i turned in and i said let's go let's go i want to shower i want to get this off and i drove i drove as fast as i could to this waterfall i got out of the car and i ran to the waterfall and i jumped in and and i was in this pool underneath the waterfall and i came up and there was a komodo dragon Mm -hmm. right in front of me and I was like whoa you know a, and and this Komodo dragon looked at me and it ran away as fast as it could it was pretty funny and uh, I was like whoa that's that's a close encounter 
But I mean, he must have thought I was insane. He must have thought I was some kind of weird animal in a black wetsuit <laughs> running down the thing and then jumping into the thing. Oh my goodness. But yes, it cleaned, it cleaned off a lot of that stuff. Yeah, no, I think like uh, the relationship that uh, we have with the animals too is, is really important. Um, the jaguar, and this is why our project calls jaguar siembra, siembra is the Spanish word for sowing. Is like the jaguar is the, the is like the umbrella species in the forest of from the north to the south of, of America. Um, and it's special um, in all the indigenous communities, like uh, for example, the mammals, if the jaguar is not in the ecosystem, the ecosystem is out of balance. It's the same here in the north with the wolf. And this is why the forest here and on threat because we need wolves. And that's, um, we need to put back the wolves to, there is a lot of deer, so deer eat the, the new trees and the, the forests that we have are not so old. So it's gonna be an issue for the future if we don't um, find that balance. And it's the same with the jaguar in Latin America. Um, the jaguar, for example, in the indigenous communities is like the, the master spirit of, 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 of nature. So it, it's, it's like a special being. And for them, animals and plants and trees are not animal plants and trees. They are beings like in the spirit form, they are like us. So there is jaguar persons, there is tree persons, there is fish persons. Um, and that's something that they have the access to actually change and transmute into these types of elements of nature. So I was really impressed, for example, in one time that I encountered a quartz um, in that area that I told you that is like our Machu Picchu. And it, it was a Hade quartz that they use for, for water, for sowing water. For example, they sow water with that quartz. So they put it into the land, they make spiritual payments and a spring start to appear not the same day but maybe a few days later or a month or a year but it happens so they saw water with that type of quartz and with elements and I was like yeah but we don't have had it here we don't have that like this is an ancient quartz from here but we don't have um, that's not from here that's more from Mexico and they told me yeah you are right so nice that you noticed that it's an element that that quartz is, is made here, but with a material that is not from here. So I was like, yeah, and how do you travel before? And they were like, yeah, because we have lost so many capabilities into our human form before we could travel it more easily. Like before we communicate more easily, like the monks in the Tibet that they use telepathy and they don't use words, it's the same over the world in these communities. So they say like, we know all, all that happened into the world because we don't need, we don't have the need to travel. We access to that places in a spiritual form. So we can go and access to these type of places and every person that could experience ayahuasca or the have some glimpse of that when you enter to the realms or other things that are really difficult to explain with words. Um, and the jaguar is really special because for example, the chamans in the Amazon and and the mammals in the Sierra, they call themselves like the jaguar people. So they say that they are able to transform and change the form to a jaguar and protect the territory. And there is chronics from the Spanish conquest that they have, I don't know, 200 years, 300 years. And they say like, yeah, we call it, we kill a jaguar. And then the next day it was body of a person. And that's something that in the Mexican culture is called Nahuales the Nahuals. Um, is it still practiced? Like, for example, I was in the Putumayo and there, there is a Taita, there is a chaman that you could see him with a jaguar like a pet. Like, with a jaguar there, easily normal, and that's something that, of course, for, for us is, is, is almost impossible. Um, so they have this form and then the access to these forms is something that they are losing to, of course, with the pass of the time, but it's still there and it's still preserved. For example, in the Sierra, they, there is another tribe that they call it like the elementals. And that's something that happens into the Amazon too. The elementals are the indigenous that never were conquered. 
that that they were never conquest and they live they live only in the caves and they are really pristine and really wild in colombia 40 percent of our country is 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 jungle we have not explored like we have a, a part that is called chiribiquete that you could find it later but it's like the 16 couple of the indigenous people and it has paintings that have 30,000 years, and it's really big and really massive. There is no access to that place only by helicopter. And there is are more than 40 indigenous tribes, uncontacted tribes that live there. And they are the Jaguar people too. So some of the stories, for example, from the guerrilla and from the FARC and from the armed conflict is that they have these encounters with indigenous that they become animals and really magical things that for us is, really far far away but if you feel it and you have it in your heart you are gonna know that we as humans are really much much more that that they uh teach us and they wanted us to believe that we are so um this is something really incredible and and yeah we could go deep into these topics for a long long um, period of time, but um, the jaguar is really important. Um, we have been losing jaguars. This is the idea of the jaguar that plant, that sow, that sow not only trees, but these things that we are talking. The stories are really important that we need to preserve that stories too. Um, and in a, in a form of, we need to learn from these people that are really well trained. Right now we have a new age spirituality that everyone could called a chaman and there is a lot of ceremonies that you go and a lot of stuff that is happening but these people are really deep into the matters of nature are really trained for years and years in solitude in 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 really special forms and it's really important to learn uh, from them thank you santi i see a question um Kath. <laughs> Thank you. Santi, um, this has just been so very enlightening to learn more about the very deep connection that, that these people have with the land. And there's so much that we can learn from it. Um, really just, just that, that connection is incredible and that respect, that, that actual, it's not just a, a, a spoken respect, it's a deep and, and active respect for the land. It, it really is, it's, it's really food for thought. <laughs> Um, I had a question just around the, the coffee production, um, and I, I'm just interested to know two things. Firstly, from the time that the tree is planted, and, and I'm one of those people who's never seen a, a coffee tree, I have to admit, <laughs> they're just not grown where I live, but um, how long does it take to, to reach a stage where it can start bearing fruit? And then I'm also just keen to know, from a livelihoods point of view, since you've started planting the coffee, um, how big is the sort of the size of the community that's involved in the production and that does benefit from the, the yield from the coffee trees? Thank you. Yeah, um, the coffee are the same as the cacao. They, they, they have periods of three or four years to start to produce in the first harvest. And after that, they produce for 30, 40 years, like the coffee that we have is um single origin coffee it comes from i'm gonna show you for this it's gonna be really useful to share again the screen but it's is like it comes from all trees like they have like 40 years and even the coffee producers they say like wow there is a tree that is producing so much quality um because it's a specialty coffee after all of these years so this is have you seen my screen now? The coffee that we have is a high altitude coffee. It's actually grows really close. It's one day from the snow. The snow before it was here. And here is the um, coffee community that grows the coffee. There are 60 families that grow the coffee. They live around this area. They live in different parts. Um, but the coffee is in this forest. So they don't have crops. They, the coffee just dry grow wild into the forest. Um, there is a lot of, um, yeah, in the past, the conflict arrived and then there was a lot of people with cattle, with uh, cows and stuff like that. So there is a lot of degraded areas too. This is why we are aiming to recover these parts. But here, like for example, there are more than 
uh, 50 hectares and the whole reserve is like six, um, six, how say you say? 650, yeah. Um, and um, the production of the coffee is really, really minimum. So they only produce, it's a micro lot, they only produce three tons for 60 families. So every family had a few uh, coffee trees, it's not too much. And the idea is to increase that because in this part of the, uh, the Sierra is high, is high altitude. So for example, cacao doesn't grow and other types of crops doesn't grow. And coffee is really ideal for that. Even the other coffee productions in Colombia and the rest of the world are starting to sell in the land and going high because it's more difficult right now with the weather that we have to grow coffee. So they need to go high and high and high. And the most quality coffee grows high and without use too much water. So that's really special. Um, there are 60 families that are working with us in the project. They have their own company. Um, they are really self-organized and they are really incredible. The um, founder of the project is Amamo, actually. Um, and his son is like a scientific indigenous in both worlds. So he is really uh, well trained in our world. He speaks really good Spanish. He was working with Microsoft to do an ancient wisdom map around this area and to map the special places. And he is a really incredible person. So they don't produce too much. It's something really unique and really special. Um, and the idea right now, for example, in Agus, we are gonna plant 25,000 trees with them, coffee trees, to increase the, um, the, um, that every family had more trees. Thank you. I see that Bart, Bart has a question as well. Yes, uh, Santi, congratulations, fantastic project. I just uh, I wonder, uh, coffee is, is a fantastic way of reaching the world. Um, and with Colombia harvesting so such a richdom in plants and, and with a richdom of indigenous people, is there a scope to kind of export their knowledge about herbal medicine and all their wisdom about uh, healthcare and with nature um, and using the, the, the way of coffee to reach the world for, for uh, that, that way, um, exporting herbal medicine knowledge or is this too difficult? No, it's actually what we are doing. Actually, when we start the project and some of the things that the community says is like, yeah, we we, we sell coffee, but we only sell coffee to start to speaking about these other things. So it's like, um, it's a way to connect with the land, but in a some more deeper way, coffee is like a connector and coffee creates spaces for talk. So um, coffee is like a, a friendly plant. So it, it, it's really special for that. And it's for some people it's like, yeah, we, I just want to have a coffee. But most of the things that we could do, we want to do with the project is to preserve and share this knowledge in the form of art, films, any media that we could have. We are working to have an interact, interactive map with the stories of this place too. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a few years project that we are doing it right now. Um, and the next stage, for example, is that in August, September with the Equinox, the Equinox is it's really important. Like we only make the sowings into the traditional sowings uh, seasons. So it's March and it's uh, August. Why? Because it's the moons and the equinox. So these are the, 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 the phases of the earth to do certain things. So they follow the rhythms of the earth to do certain things. So it's not the same if we plant a tree in July or if we planted that tree in March or in Agus, when the earth is ready to receive that tree in some way. For example, September and the equinox is really when the sun is going down and then winter is, is, is coming, it's really an introspective time. And it's a, a special place, it's, it's a special side time for talk and for weave thoughts and for concentrating meditation. 
March in, is when the sun is going up. So we have more energy. So it's the, the time for doing more. And for example, in Colombia, we don't have this too often because we don't have seasons. But since I'm living here, I notice more like, and you notice it's summer and everyone is outside. It's really crazy. I need to do things. I cannot know this day at home. We need, I need to like do something. Uh, and in winter, everyone is more chill, more calm. So it's, that, it's kind of that natural rhythm, but more deeper with things. And for example, with projects too. So they say like, it's not time to build a house. It's not the time. The perfect time is this time because the forces of nature, the moons, the star, everything is alienated to doing that. And it's going to be uplifting this, 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 this project. So um, this is all the things that we want to share and not even only share, but that the people could go and visit the place and learn from the community too. That's the next step. Um, but that's something that we aim to do. This is why we are like a storytelling transmedia project that um, the idea is to preserve all of this. The films that we are gonna do are gonna be directed by the community. So it doesn't have too much our outsider view, but most with the things that they are doing and all of this, we created making circles and talking and talking. And as they say, weaving our world. So the same as we are doing here. Thank you. Sorry, thank you, Santi. Um, I see Christina also asked a question. She's very, very fascinated about your story. She asks if you um, have recommendation for some more readings, books or documentaries. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, there is one that is actually the only documentary, it's not the only one, but it is, it's like in the 90s, Alan Herrera, that is an English filmmaker, went with the BBC um, to the Sierra, and he spoke with them, with the Kogis, and then they say like a warning in the 90s. Everything is gonna be out of balance, the weather is gonna change, we need the quartz and the gold, to be able to recover that balance. And he made a film with the BBC. 20 years later, he went back. We don't hear them, so we are gonna make a new film. So you could watch both. Biggest films made there. There is another films that are made by the community that are really incredible and they have more um, ancient wisdom and a different way of approach because it's not someone from outside telling the story, but is from the inside, but these films are not available and, and, and are difficult to find. Um, most of them are in Spanish too, but um, yeah, a lot of people speak Spanish, so it's, it's, it's okay. So the main film is Aluna, and the only one I'm gonna recommend is an indigenous filmmaker there that you could find a lot of videos on. I'm going to share it with you there. And books, there is um, a French guy that he has a foundation that is called Chendukwa, that they are buying the land back and give it to the Kogi. It's a beautiful process. Um, and he wrote a book and how he was sick in the Sierra, he almost died. Um, and the Kogi is safe his life with plant medicines and with the spiritual work. Since then, 30 years ago, he has started to work into um, give back to the communities that saved his life. Um, they have been recovered hundreds of hectares. They have been recovered actually gold and give it back to the community. Um, and they have a really amazing project. And he has a book that is called like the new, the new humanity is, I think is cool. Okay. I'm looking for the other link, but, but yeah, I will put it here in the chat. Um, yes, I'm also curious, Santi, now you're living in Europe, how you, how you uh, incorporate all the ancient wisdom in this Western lifestyle? 
or do you dis disconnect loads of the time from from the western world <laughs> uh, it's a it's a nice question like um for me the process have been really um, really beautiful like i don't know like vienna is an incredible city that is really connected with nature in in amazing ways it's like uh two blocks from here i have the most biggest forest in the area so i could walk there and then there is foxes there is deer there is everything in the middle of the city we have a river so every day in the summer i uh, in the end of the work i go to the river and take my baths and i don't feel that disconnection here um, for example, it was more difficult in Bogota because Bogota is a 20 million people city. It's really massive. It's really big. Like to reach a natural area, you need to go outside of the city. So it was more difficult there. Actually, living here, there is 2 million people for me. It's like more um, easy going and everything works in an incredible way. There is an advancement here in harmony and equity in some ways that is only here, you know, uh, but it's incredible. So it's something that uh, this could be, I always say that Vienna could be the example of how the cities of the world could be, but only if the people here realize that that benefits and that privilege is built in doing something not, something's not so good to the rest of the world. So if you share this and you open this to the rest of the world, humanity will change. And it's something that is gonna start to happen. More people from the South are coming to here, more people from the North are going to the South. And it's actually a prophecy from indigenous communities too, because in some way we are like a messengers and we need to start to talking about these things to create a new species and to reactivate the places that are here. So, for example, there is a lot of ancient wisdom here from the Celtics, from the other traditions that were here that the people forgot. That was one of the first questions that I arrived. What was the, first, the indigenous communities that were here? Now we don't have indigenous communities. And then, now you have. You, you have been colonized too by the church and everything. And you, you lose that. But it's there. So it's there maybe not into the people. Even into the people, there are people that are still carry that traditions. But it is there into the mountains, into the forests that are places that have that code and you could access to that code. And it's not so difficult. It's just simple going there, sit, meditate and make natural payments. Um, I could share a way that I do that, for example, to make my payments. And it's something that I learned from the Sierra. Every time that you want to make a payment, you need to go for a river or a big stone or a massive tree, because these are like amplifiers or uh, places of value. Places of value are like Stonehenge, um, pyramid sites, mm, pristine forest. Yeah, so pr these are places of value. That's, this is why when we enter there, we feel better because we recognize our self value, that we have lost that too. So this is the the, one of the major imbalance that we have. We don't love for ourselves. So how we could love nature? Like if we don't start with ourselves, it's like there is no there is no way to go there and that's something that actually passed a lot here that something that shocks me a lot that a lot of people here they have everything but they feel sad they feel disconnected they they don't know and something that you go to colombia and then we don't have nothing but we are happy and then we i don't know we have a different perspective um, but when you want to make a payment, uh, I'm going to share with you a, a small way to do a payment. So you need to go to a river, to a forest, or to a big um, rock because these rocks are alive. The rocks are alive. This is why all the indigenous traditions build everything in rocks because they are, they are alive. They are not there just for being strong. Um, and they cap the energy. So you go there and then you sit, you put your intention, you have your space and imagine that anything that you were gonna pay. So for example, I try to pay every morning for the food and for being alive. So I say like, okay, thank you life for, because I'm alive today and give me the strength and the force to be creative, to be focused, to be happy, to have joy, to do the things that I'm gonna do today. And then, 
grab your hands into your heart and imagine a gold energy around you that we have it now. We have our aura. This is why we feel people and we have that aura. Grab that energy and imagine it like a gold heart and give it back to nature. So imagine your ancestors, all the nature spirits, all of the natural world and give that energy to them and proclaim, this is my payment in energy for, for doing this. And do that with everything that you're going to do with a project, with everything like pay, pay, pay for the air because we need to pay. Like it's not like mother air give us everything and she doesn't want energy in return. Now that's the most biggest lie in the world. Like it's like if you don't give love to your mother, you need to sing her a song. She's going to be happy. Singing is, is another way to, to pay. This is why all the traditions around the world, they sing and dance because singing and dance is a way of payment and is something that we need to do. This is why all the rituals, the equinox, the solstice, they're making payments with joy. With joy. Um, another way to, to, to do these um, types of, um, of payments is with sweat. Uh, with sweat, like sweating is your water. This is why when we plant trees, we regenerate the land, we are paying too. Uh, when we do physical work with the, with the natural environment. With your blood for the woman, you could give your blood to the moons and it's gonna have, you're gonna be different. It's a way to pay it. For example, in the, tradi in the indigenous traditions, they put the placenta, that is the, the representation of the universe, they sow the placenta. So it's a way to give it back for that life. And with your moon, you could do that with your plants. You could put it into your plants, make a payment, um, and that's a simple way to do it. Of course, there is more and more and they have it more, but, but that's a simple way. And it's something that they do. And when I go, for example, to a river, I, I submerge myself four times, cleaning all the bad, bad things or bad stuff that I carry for the week, for my life. And when I'm going out from the river, I recharge myself with four, four positive thoughts. So do it that too. Every time that you go to the water, four times, four is a really special number in the Sierra. Everything is four, four indigenous tribes living there, four directions, there are more, but um, yeah, four seasons, four, four is a, is a special number in nature too. Wow, so beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. John. I had this amazing idea when you were talking about the coffee and the, the relationship. And I thought about all these coffee shops all over the world. The, yeah. the, uh, what are those um, Starbucks and so on? Why don't, what, maybe the ecosystem restoration camps movement should come together and make coffee shops in all the major cities around the world and only to have the coffee from, from uh, regenerative coffee plantations, coffee with uh, communities and, and camps. And then we can have music there. We can have libraries of all the most important restoration <laughs> books and we can have film nights and poetry and all, all, you know, all of these theater, whatever we want there, book readings. And um, we can have great coffee because you're right. People come together around coffee. They have a coffee. It's a stimulant too. It's a legally addictive <laughs> stimulant actually. So. The most consuming uh, uh, drug in the world. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's so mistreated that uh, we need to, to advance a lot of that. But that's a uh, that's the idea. For example, this, that's a project that we have for the next year. We wanted to do it in the beginning of the last year, but of course, everything um, is not uh, set to be ready. But uh, we are going to open um, um, our office that is going to be a place for cultural stuff and it's going to be a coffee place. We're going to be focusing coffee and cacao because both are really um, incredible. And that's the idea to bring a space that the people could go there, learn from the project, 
learn from the indigenous communities, learn from the restorations that we are doing and start to weaving with us um, in a more personal way that just to be online. And that will be awesome to replicate it around the world. It will be super special. Well, you know, like in, in Jordan, there is the, um, uh, what's the name of that um, place? Elham's, Elham's uh, Villages. Um, mm. Anyway, in, in Jordan, there are several villages in a watershed. They're very, Elham Abadi runs this place. Bayuda, yes, Bayuda village. And um, this is so nice. They have many products. And so could you imagine all of the different camps from we, Sekim? Sekim has numerous things with, with uh, organic teas and, and, and cotton, organic cotton products. Mm -hmm. That would be so wonderful if we, if we had all of the things aggregated together uh, in, in, in places and that those places were places where you could have a conversation we could even put video in there and record it and have television programs em emanating from these things. Such a, such a good idea. That's something to consider. Yeah. And if it's, if it's, if it's not about a transactional economics, it's not commodified. It's about growing community around the world and growing more rest restoration. So it's not some corporation trying to take over the world and own everything, but it's, it's about like coming together in joy and having those pure thoughts about like in our energy, in our relationships with one another, we are doing what we need to do to ensure when we are no longer here on the earth that the ecosystems are functional for our children and future generations. Yeah. Um, Bart. Just a short question, Santi. Colombia, uh, sorry to mention it, but the dreadful word uh, COVID is doing very um, uh, badly with the Corona crisis. Uh, do the indigenous people suffer or do they get special protection from the government? Um, from the government, you, you cannot expect, uh, I think, anything in any part of the world, I will say, um, not too much. Um, actually, something really impressive is that the communities, they have been talking about the, the virus for a couple of years already. So when the virus arrived, they self-isolate. They already know that something was going to come. They, two years ago, actually, we were with them, with one of the um, reforestation partners that we have. His father is one, was one of the biggest indigenous leaders there. And he suffered something like the, the, um, the mammals, they have a special language. So not every person of the community, they understand them, but they have a special language for example is if you talk with a scientist that speaks with a lot of terms that are different um he is not a mammal but he one night something happened and he started to talk like a mammal mm -hmm. in a place so the community says like wow he is possessed and and um they start to doing like spiritual work and to rebalance but he was talking like an older mammal like Mm -hmm. Only the mammals could understand what he was saying. And he was saying that something was going to come to the air that is was going to make that whole humanity, it was going to go to the cave. So it was going to go to our cave. Wow. And that's something that happened, that everyone went in quarantine, we go into our caves, we deal with our emotions, with the things that we have unsolved, with the relationships with our families, and everything. And they say that it's a period that is going to last four years. In, if in these four years, yeah, for us, mm -hmm. as always, um, if humanity doesn't learn the lesson in these four years, something more is going to come. Um, so they are really, when, when they, um, they isolate themselves, what they are start to doing, it was payments and payments and payments. 
to maintain the balance of the, the, the virus and not be able that the virus enter to the Sierra. So one of the things that we do, it was never to talk about the Corona, not even name it. Mm -hmm. So they say, when you name it, you bring it. Okay. And they, they, like, they force, like, we are not gonna, we are gonna refer with that name. Um, we are gonna refer it with the illness of the world that combines all the illness, but they were gathering and for days and months doing a spiritual work and a spiritual work to maintain that balance not for them because they don't have it, but for us, that is most the beautiful part. They do all of these things, not only for them, but for all, mm -hmm. for us. Um, they are not worried about the corona. They have a few cases they treat it with natural plants. Um, and they say that when you do that, when you have a good diet, when you are healthy in thought, it's not something to worry about it. Like it's more the fear that media has and the government's had that like if you have it you're gonna die and we will go like into theories and to something like that but from the indigenous perspective they have a lot of cases because they've been gathered like for example in one town they have a lot of cases nothing happened everyone was fine they treated with natural remedies nobody dies only one person died and we don't know if, if it was for covid because Colombia had a COVID cartel. So the hospitals were saying, you have COVID, you die for COVID because they charge to the government for every person that died. So nobody knows the numbers really of what is happening. So the message from the communities, it was like, it was like um, when a mother gives birth. In the beginning, it was going to hurt, but then it's gonna be a new life. So that we need to focus on that. Okay. is going to be a new life a lot of things change after that like a lot of people uh, rebalance their lives a lot of people think and of, things of think of things that they never thought before we realize that we are more connected even the rich even the poor we already have something in common that unites that was this experience um and the message for them is that if we don't recover the balance and the spiritual side um, is, is, is going to be, is gonna be uh, tough for us in the future years. So um, that is the, the, um, the thing. And sometimes, like, for example, this is the holistic part that we need to bring because the, the, the material part is what we do, no? Recover the ecosystems, plant the trees, regenerate the land. But we need to work too hard into the holistic part, into the spiritual part, and how we recover that balance. Because one is not gonna work without the other one. And maybe, and this is why we started this project, if we balance the heart of the world as we could balance the, the rest of the earth. Yes, I, I agree entirely. I think there is a huge mental uh, crisis, uh, especially with uh, youngsters uh, in mental care. It's a, a big problem. Isolation, addiction to iPhones and all that. And I, I wonder how to find uh, your message from working together with nature, bringing to this thousand and thousand people who feel really lonely and youngsters. This is a real uh, issue and all over the western world yeah yeah i think like the best way is to to go into the land is something that we need to do it more and um quarantines isolation is not going to work it's going to make the things worst you get depressed you don't have um during moon systems go down um they try to force the people to think you are going to be protecting the other people and that's true but until a certain point. So the message for them is like the contrary. You need to go outside. You need to eat from the air. You need to go into the rivers. You need to connect with that. You need to um, connect with nature because th there is no, if you notice the, the scientists and the, um, the ¿cómo se dice? Los medicos, the doctors, they talking about a lot of, yeah, you, you need to isolate, isolate, but they don't talk about how you could um, improve your immune system with food, with healthy food. Yeah, there is something that we need to eat that is B12, that is earth, is in the earth. 
So it's something that we should be eating earth, like the, the, the dusty uh, beaches, all of that, we need that. We need to be in contact with microbials, with virus, because it's the only way that we have been surviving for thousands of years. So um, they are part of us. They, we cannot separate that and say like, yeah, this is something that is gonna enter up humanity. And this is why the communities, they are not worried. So they isolate themselves for six months. They do a spiritual work for six months straight. And right now they are reopening um, slowly. Thank you, Santi, thank you. Thank you. Are there any, any other questions for Santi? I personally do have one more, maybe the, maybe the last question. I'm sorry. I'm just very uh -huh. curious about the love relationship mm -hmm. in the community. Is that something that we can learn from as well? Maybe to end the question or to end this session? Yeah, um, and it, it connects the same with the, the other question that you, 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 you talk about, Bart. And it was like, for example, there is, a, there is a leader that we work that is called Calixto, and he is a really medicine man when he spoke, and it's really beautiful. Um, and he talks about our self-value and, and the love. You know? So love is the most beautiful energy on the planet. We, already, we all have it. We already feel it in so many forms. Um, but in some point, we, with society and the way that we grow, we lose from ourselves, our love. We start to having more doubts and more things, and then they say you need to be successful, or maybe you are not good enough, or someone from your family told you you are not good enough, or I don't love you, or something, and that's something that is like nuts that we could we start to create in our in our brain, actually, in in in, in more deeper in our metaphysical. Um, um, yeah, spirit. So um, this is a disconnection that we have all over the world. Like not only the younger, but the older generation grow up in a difficult environment too. Um, and it's something that um, we need to recover. We need to hug more. We need to kiss more. We need to hug ourselves more. We need to give us every morning like, yeah, I'm love it. I'm, 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 I'm valued, I'm supported. Uh, I already have everything, yeah? I, I don't need anything else. If I need it, it's gonna come. Um, but we need to start to talk to ourselves with love, most important to ourselves. Because when it, it, it that relationships that is the one that is gonna di dictate all of the relationships that we have with other people. So if you talk yourself bad, then you're gonna talk with other people bad and your word is not gonna be sweet. So um, sometimes um, they say it's like, no, it's ego and you cannot confuse it with you when you only talking about you. No, 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 it's in the contrary. The most precious thing on this planet Earth is you. So it's me. I am the most precious thing on this planet because I am the one that have this experience. And I, I need to share that love that I have with my family. That is my, my first love. So my mother is my first love. My father is my first love. If I don't have good things with them, I need to, I need to arrange it. You can, we cannot live like that. Um, the only way is that to make that knots that break. And that's something that, for example, ayahuasca in a neuro, neurological way does. Ayahuasca, when you take ayahuasca, what ayahuasca does is breaking down these knots that you create in your neurons, that is thoughts that you reinforce. So every time that you think more about it, it grows, it grows, it grows. And imagine right now we are growing, already been thinking this for 20 years, I already have it here. So this is why the people go to the jungle, take ayahuasca and they say like, wow, I feel reborn. I have different thoughts. I don't have that anymore. But we don't need ayahuasca to do that. Like we need to change the thought. The thought is everything in, in, in our life, in any indigenous community. This is why they don't talk too much because we are thought. 
everything that we thought is already is already here. Every thought are seeds. So depends of what we are sowing is the reflection of our life. And we need to learn. So it's, it's not so easy like, yeah, I'm thinking good, everything is beautiful, everything is happening. My life is gonna be like a Sierra, it's going up and it's going down. The important, the important part is how are gonna be the thoughts that I'm gonna have when I'm going down? And because I need to going up again. So if I know that I'm going up again, I know that, yeah, I feel frustrated, I feel anxious, it's a part of the process, it's good to feel that. But then I need to read of that. So I'm going, make my payment or, or make my, my, my rebrain with my thought and then I'm going up again. And in some point I'm, I'm going down again. You cannot stay in the top of the mountain. Um, it's not possible. So um, the only way that we could learn is to going down with joy. That's something that is really special. Like we are going down, let's go down. Be chill, be calm, something is gonna happen. And of course, it's really easy to talk about these things, but to put it in practice is our, is our job, is, is the job that we have in front of us, is the job that all the regeneration movements and the climate movements we have in front. We have this, this course that's Everything is bad. We are, we are, we are dying. We are. Everything is falling apart, and it's true. But how we react to that is gonna be the major change of what we are living. So when I was starting the project in the Sierra, I arrived like that. I feel overwhelmed. That we are destroying the forest. How we are gonna do? I don't have money. I, I come from a humble family. What I could do? And the first thing that they told me is like, chill down, you are going really fast. Like, be care from yourself first, and then, um, uh, and then we could move on. And I started to notice that we were planting trees and they stop and they go into the tree and they start to, they have uh, something that is called poporo that is a special element from nature um, where they connect with nature. Like it's some way they, they say, it, I guess our cell phone to speak with nature. And they go with that and they sit and meditate. And I was like, no, but we need to, to finish the sewing. And I was like, no, we need to think about what we just do. If we don't think about what we just do, the next movement that we are gonna do is, is gonna be permeated. It's not gonna be pure. It's, it, it, maybe we are gonna lose something. So in, to be able to no, not lose that because that would be the surprise element, we need to reflect and we need to calm down. So sit, share with us, and we sit like half an hour without almost talking, and then we went back again to, to doing. So everything that they do is with patience. And the other thing is that they told me there is no, there is no way to save the world without joy. There is no way. There is no way to, to save ourselves and nature without being happy. So um, we have uh, major problems. We don't have funding. The people doesn't care. We talk about this thousands of times and nothing happened. Um, what we could do, how we could awake humanity to be able to gather with us and to be more active, how we could do that. Um, the only way is to be in the, the example of that. It's, my energy is gonna dictate the energy of the other ones. I know that a lot of people feel inspired by John, a lot of people feel inspired by Inge, by Kat, by Frida, by everyone that is here around their homes. And this is a wave that is gonna start to expand and expand and expand. And they told me that like, come here, have fun, plant the trees, try to laugh most of what you can and have places, have spaces for reflection in these places be serious, be focused, but try to be always with joy, 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 joy. And the other thing that I, I forget to say is when you make the payments, for example, to, to put in the heart uh, out, the golden heart, and to bring it to nature, put an emotion to that because the emotion is energy in motion. So it's going to put it out. So be happy. Okay, I'm going to put this. Feel grateful and feel grateful. I feel fullified, feel fullified. 
If you want to make a sad payment, be sad. It's cool too. But we need to start to work more with our emotions and to put in into the realm that we cannot see it, but is there. Thank you, Santi. What a beautiful end, I think, for this session. I think we all learned so much. I, it, I wrote down so much because they're all beautiful <laughs> lessons. So thanks again for sharing them. Uh, thank you, thank you. And thank you everyone for joining this session. Um, I wish you all a very lovely evening or day or wherever you are and uh, hope to see you next time. Yeah, thank you very much everyone. I hope that you have a great day and let's keep growing together. We are the forest. Well said. Bye. Thank you. Bye.